bunker. Uh, this devlog is slightly different than most devlogs, as in this one's about a piece of artwork. So I did the artwork for Who on Who. It's a father son podcast reviewing classic season Doctor Who in no particular order. I'd never know what episode uh, I'm going to review until I hear it, what it's going to be in the episode. So the last episode came out about a week ago, and that's where we found out we were doing Horns of Iron Man. <laughs> Horns of Iron Man. Oh, it's okay. I can deal with that. Um, so, watched the Horns of Armand last night, and I got a sketchbook with me, and I did a few sketches and some drawings, but nothing major. Honestly, there's not enough story in that story to actually spoof it in any meaningful way. So this episode is going to be tricky because David has already said that he wants to trust Simon on it, which means I've got to do a really good uh, likeness of Josh. And so I can't just do a strand of, here's a drawing of who are your characters, and I just do the likeness as well. So it, when I get to that, when I have to do an episode like that, I tend to go old school. Old school! So I'll be using this pencil. This is just a disposable big Technica pencil. It's got an eraser on the end. And I love these. I, I buy these by the dozen. Great. I've got a fly line around where I'll place it. Here's, here's another one here. It's, this one's black. And I'll be drawing on this. Which, if I hold up a sketchbook behind it, you can see that is punched. This is 12 field acne punched animation paper. I love a drawing with that. So, gonna try and come up with an idea for Horns and Iron One and get drawing.
Okay, so we, we've made some drawings. It's took a couple of evenings. Um, we've got two drawings that we're quite happy with. This one. Quite happy with. And we have this one. There we go. And we got this one. And next step is to get them into the computer. <clears throat> now historically I'd have done that by um, using a scanner. But I haven't done a scanner for a, a number of years now, so I'll be uh, using uh, a, uh, a wall, uh, some blue tack and an SLR camera. This is the Olympus Digital SLR camera and so I'll just send you to stick it to the wall and take a picture. Once you've got them into once you've got them into the computer I can then edit them, alter the proportions, change the scale of each one and essentially lay out a composition of, of elements that I would like to see. Who, who, who so I've got documents set up and I've scanned my artwork in and I've also got a template. Uh, so this template is a large image. This is 1024 by 1024. All, all the artwork for everyone who is starts off this size and we shrink it down to fit on your um, whether it be iPod or, or whatever. Um, and it works better for us. Um, so uh, basically I'm going to start laying out the image, resizing these elements, just getting them in, in a nice uh, order. So over the last few couple of years I've sort of shifted away from using um, normal off the shelf software like Photoshop and I've switched to using more open source software like GIMP and Inkscape. So I've got documents set up and I've scanned my artwork in and I've also got a template. Uh, so this template is a large image, this is 1024 by 1024. All, all the artwork for everyone who is, starts off this size and we shrink it down to fit on your um, whether it be iPod or, or whatever. Um, then it works better for us. Um, so uh, basically I'm going to start laying out the image, resizing these elements, just getting them in, in a nice uh, order.
I'm not quite happy with that. I think that could be quite fun. It's not bad. Um, and we'll put a backdrop in there and we'll do some modifications to the text. And uh, so next up will be um, so that's it. So next next up we'll be taking this into another program and tracing it out, inking it up, colouring it in uh, and finishing it off. Okay, so I've taken the composition that we put together in GIMP and I've, I've imported the puppet layers into, um, into Inkscape, which is a vector drawing program. Uh, look, I've changed my eyes a little bit, I've separated every element into some layer. So, come on, it's Marty's layer, it's K9, Janet Ellis. Uh, head of cutter and some egg boxes and things. So I'm just going to show you how I work. I work exclusively with the pen tool. So I'm going to zoom in. Oh, yeah. In addition, I've imported this. This little graphic here is a palette of all the colours used for Huey as the Fourth Doctor, Season 12. So you know uh, that's his outline colours, flesh tone, hair tone. Uh, Coat tone, also a scarf colours and highlights, and this is also used as scarf. Uh, anyway, back to target, and we'll start inking up uh, Marty, and we'll start just doing his head. Uh, dead simple. So I'm going to zoom in, and uh, I'm going to start just drawing lines. And I don't, I don't even care. Um, how close these follow. What I'm looking for is to draw some red lines. And uh, when I'm happy with that, I can set the colour by shift clicking to set, set the colour of the stroke, it's the outline. And then I'll just on. So I'm just going to quickly do. Last, last bit, let's just do this last bit and then what I do is I tend to get this, this beautiful tool and now I'm just literally just dragging it to change the curvature of the line like that.
Alright, we're happy with that. On that we just fill some shapes and we order the shapes and that will give us my so um, this has taken approximately 10 hours now um, and we're kind of done so what I've done is I've made a, a, a background on the background is replica of the set from Horns and Armour I've just made this component and duplicated it three times Put a bit of a blur on it to really sort of give the depth to the background. Uh, every I've separated the lines from the colours, which allows me to do lots of shading and ordering of this stuff. Uh, I've gone for the green and black here because that kind of references Soul Deeds uh, colours um, of his costume, and a lot of his lackeys had that sort of black and green thing going on. Um, I didn't have, I don't have enough space on. In this church, you put Soul Deed on there as well, it's going to get very uh, cramped in there. Um, and as I was finishing last night, I decided to redo uh, the horn here uh, for a bit of fun, and uh, that's what we're going to have. Um, it's kind of fun, I quite like it when the artwork sort of interferes with the text, you know, the characters are hanging off, it or they've shot a laser through it, or you know, stuff like that. It's, it's kind of fun. And I think this, this makes it fun as well. Um, this is done now, so in a second I'll save this off. But before I do, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Um, I always put little jokey things, if I can, I always try and put little jokey uh, things to the image that uh, keen, eagle eyed viewers might, might get uh, the references. Um, so, um, if you don't, uh, and don't want to know what's, what's going on, just skip ahead. If you do want to know the little easter eggs in here, then keep watching. There's not many for this one. Um, so, David's Matador costume. I wanted him as a bullfighter, but I didn't want him to actually be a bullfighter, if that made any sense. So that's why I did the castanets. And so as to, I, I gave him the scarf instead of the red cape, but his costume is based on um, Bugs Bunny's costume from uh, Bully for Bugs. Um, I love, I love the uh, the Looney Tunes stuff and uh, the early days and Chuck Jones and stuff like that. So there's a chance I actually put a bit of something in there. Then I'm gonna go for that. Um, what else have we got? Okay, this bit will make more sense if you know who Janet Ellis is, and for Brits who are listeners to who I'm sure you'll know, of course, she's a presenter of the children's BBC show uh, Blue Peter, which is why both she and Marty have got Blue Peter bags on. I'll just zoom in and you can see she's got one there, he's got one there. Uh, and Janet. Uh, was a presenter on the show and one of the things they would do occasionally is they'd, they'd show you cool things you can make out of toilet rolls by sticking together and painting them, you yeah. uh, The most infamous one is a replica of uh, Tracy Island from the Thunderbirds. <laughs> um, what else have we got? Uh, that's really, there's a, a slight modification to K9. Uh, uh, I'm normally trying to get something in there, I suppose, you know, yeah, we've got the little question mark on the collar. It's nothing major, but I mean, when I can, I try and reference things, you know. Um, so, and that's it. 
that's the process I take every time I do a piece of artwork for who on who. Um, I'll have probably a few days and then a new episode of who on who will come out and that's when I find where the next episode will be. And the process continues again and again. <laughs> it's not all that bad. Thanks for dropping by the bunker. Hope to see you again sometime. Okay, bye. Thank you.